I'd like to give you a warm welcome to our service. It certainly is great to be back at the church. Uh, this is the first step back to normalcy, and we're hoping within a month to uh, be having services at the church. Uh, we're in our series, Real Faith in an Unreal World, and we've been looking at the supernatural life of faith. It's supernatural because the eye of faith sees what uh, others cannot see. We, we're guided by something far, far greater. We've been looking at uh, Hebrews 11 faith, and we've been looking from different angles, looking at different uh, facets of faith. And uh, my prayer is that your understanding of faith would certainly uh, be growing. Uh, we've looked at the fact that faith worships. This is the starting point. We looked at Abel's sacrifice that speaks of our, the, the focus of worship, which is the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sin. Faith not only wor uh, worships, it also walks. And we took a look at Enoch and his intimate relationship with God. And it, it really just reminds us it's so essential uh, to cultivate our relationship uh, and our faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith works. Uh, no believed. He built an ark uh, and he saved his family. And certainly uh, people who filled with faith would uh, the desire to uh, see people around them being saved. Faith waits. We saw Abraham who rested on the providence and the sovereign purposes of God. Faith wars. Moses overcame the bondage of Egypt and uh, led God's people into the promised land. Faith wins. We saw how Joshua conquered Jericho, and uh, there are certainly faith battles that all of us need to fight and we need to win. Faith witnesses. Uh, Rahab's life is a wonderful testimony to the depth of God's groundless grace. We now come to the final section of Hebrews 11, uh, and perhaps for some, uh, this will be a difficult read, but it's absolutely essential uh, to our understanding of uh, what authentic faith is really all about. If you'll turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll start reading from uh, verse 32. Hebrews 11 and verse 32. And what more shall we say? Time will not allow me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the, the raging fire, and escaped the edge of the sword, who gained strength from weakness, and became mighty in battle, and put foreign army, armies to flight. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Still others endured mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were put to death by the sword. They went around in sheepskins and, and goatskins, destitute, oppressed, and mistreated. The Lord was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and hid in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet they did not receive what was promised. God had planned something better for us, so that together with us, they would be made perfect. So far, we're reading God's word. This is by his in prayer as we commit this time uh, to the Lord. Father, we thank you that we can come around your word again in this wonderful series on faith. And we just ask that you would uh, expand our understanding uh, of faith and, and, and grow our love and, and, and desire to see more of you in our lives. Father, I pray that you'd encourage us today. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to understand faith. And for the times when we go through difficulty and uh, we, we feel discouraged, we, we just pray that we would see with new eyes uh, what your desire is for our lives. Father, we thank you. We can place our complete trust in you. And Lord, we ask that you would indeed grow our understanding and uh, our strength to really look to you uh, and, and help us to be focused on you. We pray this and we, Lord, we just pray for those again who are, are struggling, Lord, who are going through tough times, who maybe have lost work or uh, maybe are facing sickness. Lord, we ask that this uh, word would be an encouragement directly from you. Father, we pray for our country as we uh, still struggle with the pandemic. And Lord, we ask that you'd give us wisdom. We pray for our church that you'd give us wisdom going forward in terms of our services. Lord, we pray this all in your precious name. Amen. You imagine I have no ups and downs. Just a level and lofty stretch of spiritual attainment with unbroken joy and equanimity. By no means. I'm often perfectly wretched and 
everything appears most murky. So wrote the man who in his day was called the greatest preacher in the English-speaking world, Henry Jowett. At a Sunday morning service, the the great man of God, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, shocked his congregation by saying the following. I'm the subject of depression of spirit so fearful that I hope that none of you ever get to such extremes of wretchedness as I go to. Both these men of God, great men of God, um, fought tremendous battles of faith. Both faced oppression. Both faced opposition, discouragement, doubt. And and yet these men, they they stood firm in their faith. We're going to be looking at one last perspective. um, And today we're going to be looking at faith withstands or, or faith perseveres. True faith keeps on keeping on. Do you remember the defining verse of faith? If we go back to chapter 11 and verse 1. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not uh, see. Faith gives us a hope. It gives us a, a, a certainty about the future. Faith brings the, the invisible uh, into view. The, the eye of faith uh, helps us see what others cannot see. This was the foundation of the 16 heroes of faith listed in this chapter. Our author was writing to a a small group of Christians who were facing growing persecution. They were suffering for their faith. This was no minor trial. Soon they were to face the the waves of horror uh, from the mad emperor Nero. Was everything hopeless? Not at all. Christians who live by faith in the words of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, they, they, they fix their eyes on Jesus, the, the author and perfecter of, of, of their faith. The author, the preacher, uh, who writes to the Hebrews, concludes this faith chapter with a, a dazzling rush of, of encouragement as he, he quickly describes the empowerment that comes through faith to those who put their trust in, in God people who may have appeared as winners or or losers in this life. Firstly, we see in this passage that uh, those who have faith are empowered for victory. The writer begins by listing half a dozen obvious winners who were empowered for victory. Verse 32 says, And what more shall I say? Time will not allow me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Gideon had a phenomenal victory over the Midianites. Remember, he had to reduce his troops from 32,000 to 10,000 and and then to 300. And he came against a, a mighty army at night with torches and trumpets. Gideon's feat was a, a crazy act of faith, so it seemed. Likewise, Barak, obeying God's work through Deborah, his prophet, met a a great army of of, of Caesarea with its 900 chariots and thousands of troops with a a tiny army. But faith carried the day. Samson, Jephthah, David, his battle against uh, Goliath. Remember those memorable words. It is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and, and he will give all of you into our hands. Samuel, the little boy who became God's prophet. When you look at these heroes of faith, they all have something in common. Each lived in a day when faith in God was scarce. Judges 21, 25 reminds us, everyone did what is right in their own eyes. Each one battled overwhelming odds. Gideon's 300 against a a massive army. David, the young shepherd boy against this experienced, massive Goliath. Most significantly and certainly an encouragement for me, each had a a flawed faith. Listen to what the theologian uh, John Calvin remarked. There was none of them whose faith did not falter. Gideon was slow than he needed to have been to take up arms, and it was with difficulty that he, he ventured to commit himself to God. Barak hesitated at the beginning so that he almost 
had to be compelled by the reproaches of, of the prophet Deborah. Samson was the victim of enticements of his mistress and, and thoroughly betrayed the safety of himself and, and all his people. Jephthah rushed headlong into making a, a foolish vow and was uh, over uh, uh, um, obstinate in performing it and, and then thereby marred a, a fine victory by the, the cruel death of his daughter. And we could add David, who was sensuous, and, and Samuel, who, who failed in his family life. Calvin concludes, in every saint, there is always to be found something reprehensible or, or something that's bad. Nevertheless, although faith may be imperfect and incomplete, it does not cease to be approved by God. There is no reason, therefore, why the fault from which we labor should break us or discourage us, provided we go by faith in the race of our calling. How encouraging are these words. This is the hope each of us has. Faith's empowerment is, is not beyond any of us. All of us can tap into the empowerment that comes by faith in God. By faith we are empowered for conquest and service. Verse 33 says, who through, what's the word? It's faith who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Remember uh, Samson and, and David and Benaniah? By faith, we are empowered for, for personal deliverance. Who shut the, the mouths of lions, remember Daniel, quenched the fury of the flames, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and escaped the edge of the sword. Remember David, Elijah, Elisha, and, and, and many, many others. By faith, we are empowered for great achievements, whose weakness was turned to strength and became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. We think of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath and Elisha and the Sunanite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 34. What power comes through faith? God delights to effect mighty triumphs through, through people of faith. Faith pleases God, and faith in God empowers. Faith can save from a flood. Faith can cross a Red Sea. Faith can cross a, a flooded Jordan River. Faith can bring down the walls of, of Jericho. Faith can prevail when outnumbered a thousand to one. God can deliver us from anything he chooses, sickness, and injustice, family troubles, the, the list goes on and on. But there's also a parallel truth, and for many of us, this is difficult. God has not promised to deliver us from every problem we face in this life at, at all times and in every situation. In fact, not all of us will be apparent winners in this life from the world's perspective, some people of faith will be big losers. Firstly, we're empowered for victory, but, but secondly, we, we're empowered for perseverance. To balance the record, the, the, the writer shows us a faith that provides us a different empowerment, a, a power to persevere to the end. We're empowered to persevere in persecution. Verse 35 and 36 Women received back their dead, raised again to life. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. So others endured mocking and flogging and, and even chains and imprisonment. We know that the writer is referring to the Maccabean uh, persecution because the word for torture refers to the Typanium, a large drum or, or wheel on which the Maccabean victims were, were stretched out and, and beaten and even dismembered. Second Maccabees details the gruesome torture of a, a 90-year-old uh, priest by the name of Eleazar who refused to eat pig's meat and then the torture of his seven brothers for the same reason. Each could have been released if they had compromised, but each categorically refused, as the text explains, so that they might gain a better resurrection. Better. Why was it better because it is a resurrection, not just to life on earth, as was the case with the widow's son, but a, a resurrection in the world to come. 
empowered to, perse- uh, to persevere in persecution. We're empowered to persevere even to death. The preacher continues on to remind this little church that they were, there were those who uh, uh, would faithfully uh, persevere even to death. Verse 37 says, they were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were put to death by the sword. Then we're empowered to persevere in, in distress and the deprivations of life. There were those who, of the faithful, as the writer reflects, who, who knew deprivation. Verse 37 continues, they, they went around in sheepskins and, and goatskins, destitute, oppressed, and, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and hid in caves and holes in the ground. There's a a calculated irony here. Those who the world has looked down on are those whom the world does not deserve to have. So much for a, a, a prosperity gospel. Why could these people persevere? For the simple reason of their great faith. The battered little church in the Roman Empire had to take note, and and friends, we too need to take note. What was the result? Well, first in verse 39, these faithful were commended for their faith. This is how the faith chapter began, and, and this is how it ends. A commendation for faith. God forgets no one who loves him and, and serves him. The one with the apparent victory early in the chapter and the other with an apparent loss. Second, in verse 39, none of these faithful received what was promised. Although many and great promises were fulfilled in their lifetimes, none of these received the great promise, the coming of the Messiah, the the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. Each of these Old Testament faithful entered heaven with that promise unfulfilled. Why is this? Well, verse 40 tells us God had planned something better for us so that together with us they would be made perfect. No one was made perfect under the old covenant because Jesus had not yet died on a cross. They were saved, but not until Jesus' work on the cross was complete could salvation be perfect. They looked forward, but we look back to the glorious work of Jesus on the cross. The centerpiece of our our faith is this. Look to Jesus, the the author and perfecter of our faith. There's a poem by Richard Fuller, I Will Not Doubt. I will not doubt, though all my ships at sea come drifting home with broken masts and sails. I will believe the hand which never fails from seeming evil worketh good for me. And though I weep because these Though sails are tattered, still will I cry, while my best hopes lie shattered. I trust in thee. I will not doubt, though all my prayers return, unanswered from the still white realm above. I will believe it, and all-wise love, which has refused these things for which I yearn. And though times I cannot keep from grieving, yet the pure ardor of my fixed believing undimmed shall burn. I will not doubt, though sorrows fall like rain and troubles swarm like bees about a hive. I will believe the heights for which I strive are only reached by anguish and by pain. And though I groan and writhe beneath my crosses, I shall yet see through my, my severest losses the greatest gain. I will not doubt, while anchored in this faith, Like some stored ship, my soul braves every gale. So strong is courage that it will not fail. To breast the mighty unknown sea of of death. Oh, may I cry, though body parts with spirit. I do not doubt, so the listening worlds may hear it with my last breath. The message of the preacher in Hebrews when we doubt is is look to the cross. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the, the author and perfecter of our faith, 
who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. I'll never forget a, a man in my very first congregation who, who was a, a suffering saint, a man who had all the faith in the world, and, and his whole testimony as he was busy dying was absolutely incredible, it was memorable, as he testified of, of God's persevering love that he had for him. This man persevered, and he loved God, and it was a glorious testimony. Job, in chapter 13 and verse 5, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Paul wrote to his protege, Timothy, in chapter, to Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 12, as he, he came to the, the, the end of his glorious and illustrious life, he was facing persecution and death, and he, he wrote the following to his protege, for I know whom I am believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have entrusted to him until that day. Horatius Spafford was a successful and respected lawyer in the States, an active Christian, a, a friend and supporter of D.L. Moody and other evangelical leaders of his day. Without warning, a, a string of events, uh, of, of tragedies uh, occurred in his life. First, the unexpected death of his only son, a short time later, the, the Great Chicago Fire of 1871 wiped out the family's extensive real estate investments. When D.L. Moody was leaving to go and preach in England, he decided to take his family with him to uh, lift their spirits and uh, assist in the meetings. Horatius was detained by some urgent business but sent his family uh, on ahead by boat to England. Halfway across the Atlantic, the boat was struck by another vessel and sank in, in, tw in 12 minutes. All of his four daughters were drowned. His wife was among the few that were miraculously saved. He received the following telegram from his wife, saved alone. Horatius Spafford stood hour after hour on the deck of the ship as he traveled to join his wife in, in Cardiff in Wales. When the ship passed the place where his precious daughters were drowned, Spafford received sustaining comfort from, from God to write the following. When sorrows like sea billows roll, it is well with my soul. The other words of this great hymn. When peace like a river affordeth, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should come, lest this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and she his own blood for my soul. The Lord haste the day when my faith shall be sight and clouds be rolled back like a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Won't you stand with this great man of God, uh, Spafford, who, who trusted God in the midst of his trial. And my, my prayer for you today is that the Lord would strengthen you, that he'd, he'd give you that perseverance that is spoken about uh, in the, the last verses, verses 32 to 40, uh, that we find in Hebrews 11. Won't you bow with me in prayer as we just ask the Lord to, to minister to us? And, and maybe you're going through a crisis right now, and won't you just lay that before the Lord and ask, you to, ask him to give you the faith that you can respond uh, to him? Father, we thank you that we can come this uh, day to seek your face. Lord, we read about this glorious faith that carried these saints who suffered. Father, we want to pray that indeed that would be our experience. Lord, that you'd help, our, 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 help us in our faith that we'd withstand the, the challenge of the day. Lord, we ask and we plead that you'd give each of us perseverance. Lord, help us to, to work out our faith in our, 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 our daily challenges and trials. Lord, we know you're faithful. And Father, in those times when you choose not to re remove those trials, Lord, we ask that you would strengthen our faith, teach us great lessons, and Father, draw us closer to you. Lord, help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the, the author and perfecter of our faith. Friends, as we bowed, won't you 
just pray and, and seek God's face. Perhaps you're facing a crisis. Why don't you lay that before the Lord and ask him to give you this persevering power, this persevering faith. Father, we thank you that you come alongside of us. We, we thank you for your spirit that, that counsels us and gives us wisdom. And Lord, lifts us up. And Father, we pray that indeed we would look to you. We pray this all in your precious name. Amen. If you'd like to pray with us or have a need, please contact us. You're welcome to do that. Uh, you can also uh, contact me on Coffee Chat 101 if you uh, outside the Pretoria area and we will respond to you. Coffee Chat 101 at gmail.com. We'd love to just share with you and pray for you. And if you need counsel, then we are welcome uh, to, to contact us and we will uh, certainly uh, love to share with you. We want to rem remind our men that our men's conference was uh, postponed for a week. Uh, the reason for that being is that we are hoping to have the uh, men's conference at the church, uh, certainly for the, for the first 50 folk, uh, men who attend. Uh, there will also be, the conference will also be on Zoom uh, next Saturday. Uh, that's the 12th of September at 3 o'clock. And we, uh, Pastor Duncan Miller, who was at our previous uh, men's camp, will be ministering. And uh, we trust that you will join us if, uh, if, you, if you'd like to do that. And if you are planning to come to church, then registration uh, for the church uh, for the attendance at church is absolutely essential, and uh, you can contact the office or um, you can contact our, our men's team, uh, Henny Nell, and, and he will write your name down for that. Uh, we then want to just again remind you of our faith projects, uh, faith promise projects uh, for 2020, 2021. Uh, we are um, uh, donating money uh, to the Mollers in Malawi. They've got a Bible translation project. Um, our total target is 30,000 rand, and we've got about 12,500 to go. In fact, it's now about 10,000, um, and we are hoping to fund uh, three books of the Bible. It certainly is it's so exciting uh, as they translate the Bible into the Yao language. Uh, we're then supporting David Ball and his theological studies. Uh, we have collected a, a substantial amount, and um, the target uh, is still about 8,725 rand uh, to cover the rest of his studies for the next three years. Uh, then Lynn Crutchley, we are supporting her. And those who are supporting, if you'd like to continue, that's great. Uh, then we'd like to support uh, a theological student. And um, a year's studies cost about 36,000 rand. Uh, if you are keen to do that, uh, then please note that. And then we also have a emergency and sundries fund. We've listed there 20,000 rand. Uh, the challenge actually is far greater. Um, at this time, we've had a cut back on our missions to some extent. Uh, we, are, we have been able up to now to fund the uh, lesser amount out of our uh, uh, Faith Promise pr projects, uh, the undesignated amount. Um, and so if you want to give to that, it's a wonderful testimony up to now that we have been able to do this. And uh, we want to continue doing that. So if you'd like to do that, then please just put it as uh, sundries. Uh, you need to just remind you that the money goes into the church bank account and you need to list Faith Promise or FP and then the uh, project you're supporting, whether it's Mollers or, or David Ball, Lynn Crutchley, uh, BTC, or, or the Sundries Fund. Please just list that so we know uh, where to do it. Or simply missions, if you'd like to support uh, our missionaries, please be reminded not to take it out of your tithe. Uh, the majority of our support, in fact, comes out of tithe. Um, over 125,000 a month is given to missions, so please don't uh, rob Peter to pay Paul. Um, then we also want to just highlight our Christmas bag project. Uh, we do this annually. Uh, this year it's slightly different in that we are not asking people to buy their own gifts. Uh, because of the COVID-19 challenge, uh, we're going to be uh, just donating money. And then there will be a team who buys all the gifts. We're supporting four communities. Uh, we're hoping to have 190 uh, Christmas bags. Um, and it's 160 rand per bag. Or if you're going to pay part of that, you're welcome to do that. Uh, and th that comes to about 30,400 rand that we need by November as we uh, purchase those bags. I certainly is excited. You can see the, the folk we are supporting. Uh, a lot of the children never receive any gifts. The, the, this is the only time they ever get a gift with their name on it. And it's really exciting to be part of this. As we do every year, we want to support uh, these underprivileged communities. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's been a, a great time. Uh, the announcements will come up in a moment. And we just trust you'd have a glorious week. Uh, we're excited about coming back to church, uh, possibly in about four weeks' time. We're just discussing it at our, our next executive meeting. And uh, we will keep you updated uh, with what's going to happen. The Lord bless you and keep you. And we trust that uh, you'll have a wonderful week. God bless.